This is a demonstration of how to perform the final activation checklist. Performing this checklist can save you many hours of work by preventing common problems encountered in network installations. Typically, even if each cable checks out with a CAT5 cable tester, it is possible for the entire cable structure to become problematic. The tools that we need for this test are a multimeter, a bus checker card and a data power jumper, and two terminators. For the purpose of this demonstration, we'll be using the demo system that you see here. Let's go over how the system is daisy chained. Every device will have two RG45 sockets and the system is connected in a daisy chain fashion. The system in front of me starts with the clock in the box, which is here, and then that connects to the micro panel, and then it connects to the blue box, and then to the six button Chelsea switch, and then to this four button Chelsea switch. In this case, the clock in the box and this four button Chelsea switch are your end devices, and it starts with the clock in the box, and it ends with the four button Chelsea switch. Before performing the final activation checklist, ensure that the entire system is powered down. We can simply verify by measuring voltage on each panel that has a transformer, or by plugging in the bus checker card on one end of the bus and measure voltage across ground in plus 12. Performing the checklist on a powered system may damage some components as well as give you faulty readings. The first test we are going to perform is the continuity test. The purpose of this test is to verify the total length of the bus as well as to ensure that there's full continuity from the first device all the way to the last device. The first step is to plug in the data power jumper into the last device. Then plug in the bus checker card into the first device. Set your multimeter to the 200 ohm or equivalent range and measure resistance across the following terminals on the bus checker card. From ground to A and from B to 12. So first I'll measure from ground to A and I'm getting 1.1 ohms and then measure from B to 12 and I'm getting 1.1 1 .1 ohms again. Both readings should be identical or within 10% of each other because they are practically the same length. The readings should also not exceed 160 ohms to ensure that the bus is not over 4,000 feet. If the test readings fail, please go back and check the system for damaged cables or bad crimps. The second test will be the short circuit test. The purpose of this test is to detect any short circuits along the bus. Please use the 1K ohm or equivalent range setting on your multimeter. First, remove the data power jumper from the last device. Then go back to the bus checker card and measure resistance across all combination of inputs. Measure from ground to A, and then measure from ground to B, and then from ground to 12, and then from A to B, and then from A to 12, and then from B to 12. All of my readings were greater than 1K ohms, which means I don't have a short on the system. If the test readings fail, please go back and check the system for damaged cables or bad crimps. Once the problem is corrected, we'll need to start back from the continuity test. The third test will be the earth ground test. The purpose of this test is to ensure that there are no pathways to earth ground. The LCND system requires an isolated low voltage ground. We can use the back plate on any panel or any metal conduit that is grounded for this test. Measure resistance across the ground terminal to the earth ground from the A terminal to earth ground, from the B terminal to earth ground, and from the plus 12 terminal to earth ground. We should be expecting a reading of infinite or open on all of them. If the test readings fail, please go back and check the system for damaged cables or bad crimps. Typically, a nick cable is more likely the culprit. 
Once the problem is corrected, we'll need to start back from the continuity test. After all three tests have passed, the very last test is the terminator test. Ensuring that the bus is properly terminated is critical because it will ensure system stability. Every device will have a two-pin terminal where the terminator can be plugged in. Only the first and last device should be terminated. Once the bus has been terminated properly, measure resistance across A and B. This reading should be between 60 to 90 ohms. If the test readings fail, please go back and check every device if there's a missing or extra terminator on the bus. Once the test has been completed, we may power up the system to complete the startup and commissioning process. You may now call our technical support group at 1-800-345-4448 to submit your results. We have technicians available 24-7 to provide assistance.